Colleen, and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today, we're going to be talking about our senses. Our senses help us figure out the world around us, and we all use our senses differently. There are five senses. Sight. What do we use to see? Can you point to it? Hearing. What do we use to hear? Our ears. Smell. What do we use to smell? Our noses. Taste. What do you taste with? Our tongues and our mouths. And touch. What do we use to touch things? Our hands. And sometimes our feet too. We'll start by reading a story together. Then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection. And we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today, we're going to be reading a story called I Hear a Pickle and Smell, See, Touch, and Taste It Too. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see a couple different clues on this cover. I see a child and it looks like they're eating something. Maybe they're tasting something. And I see a jar over here. And to me, it looks like they might be tasting a pickle. Have you ever had a pickle before? It looks like they might like it because they have a smile on their face. What do you think the story might be about based on what we can see? Let's find out. I Hear a Pickle and Smell, See, Touch, and Taste It Too by Rachel Isadora. Now we're going to start the story by talking about our hearing and the story is going to invite us to make different noises that we might be able to hear. So you can help me out by making the noises, okay? Here, tweet tweet, I hear the birdie. Can you make a bird noise? Buzz buzz, I hear the bee, uh oh. I don't hear the worm. I hear the seagull. Caw, caw. What kind of bird noises have you heard before? Can you make a bird noise? I hear the ocean in the shell. Crash. I hear the waves. I hear grandma. Hello. We hear the music. We dance. Bang, bang, bang. I hear the drums. Too loud. I hear the fridge hum. I hear my cat purr. I hear the vacuum. Vroom. Honk, beep, honk. I hear the traffic. Do you have any sounds that you like to hear? What about a sound that maybe you don't like to hear so much? Maybe like this child who heard the drums and thought it was too loud. I hear the rain. I hear thunder. Boom. I don't hear the snow falling. Hooray. Yay. I hear my hit. I hear cheering. Smell. What do we use to smell? Can you point to it? I smell the soap. I smell mommy's perfume. It smells pretty. I smell my blankie. I love my blankie. I smell the baby's poop. Yuck! I smell my big brother's smelly sneakers. Do you have a favorite smell? 
Maybe you have a smell that's associated with a memory. Maybe you went to a place and it smelled different, like a garden or a bakery, or maybe you were with someone special and you were having something really yummy to eat and it smelled really good. If you'd like, you can talk about that memory with the people that you're with. I smell bread. I'm hungry. I smell toast. It's burnt. I smell the pizza. Yum. I smell the cheese. Stinky. I don't smell. I have a cold. Achoo! I smell the rain. I smell the grass. It's so fresh. I don't like to smell cow poop. I smell the flowers. See. What do we use to see? I see the airplane up so high. The lamp is on. I see. The lamp is off. I don't see. I see my books. I read to Henry. I don't see the words in my book. I wear my glasses. I see the words. I don't see the flower grow. Let's use our own binoculars to check out our space around us to see what we can see. Are you ready? Let's get out our binoculars and take a look around. What do you notice? Let's keep going. I see Charlie. Catch. I see the snow. I don't see my mitten. Can you find it for them? I see the moon. I see a star. I make a wish. I see the bunny. It hops. I see the turtle shell, but I don't see the turtle. Hello in there. I see fireworks. Wow. I see my balloon. Bye bye. Touch. What do we use to touch? I touch the friendly dog. Soft. I touch my birdie. Hi, Lulu. I don't touch the fish. I touch the sand. I make a castle. I touch the rain. I don't touch the cactus. Prickly. I touch my brother's foot. Hee hee. I don't touch my boo boo. Ouch. I don't touch the plug. No, no. I touch the lollipop. Sticky. I touch the egg. Oops. I don't touch the stove. It's hot. What are some of your favorite things to touch? I like to pet my dog. He's really soft. I touch the cupcake. I touch the worm. Slimy. I don't touch the painting. It's wet. Pop, pop, pop. I touch the bubble. So we've talked about seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, what's left? Taste. I taste the watermelon, sweet. I taste the pretzel, salty. I taste the hot dog, yum. I wait to taste the oatmeal, it's still hot. I taste the apple, crunchy. I taste the chili, spicy. I taste the milk. I don't want to taste the spinach. I taste the spinach and I like it. What's your favorite food? What does it taste like? I taste the crackers. The birds do too. I taste the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I taste the jelly sandwich. I'm allergic to peanuts. I taste the spaghetti and meatballs, my favorite, delicious. 
I can't wait to taste the cake after dinner. I taste the ice cream. My dog likes it too. I taste the pickle. It's sour. I smell the pickle. It's spicy. I see the pickle. It's green. I touch the pickle. It's slippery. I hear the pickle crunch. The end. I invite you to think about your favorite part of a story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Are you going to take a very slow moving river ferry and smell all there is to smell? Or are you going to take a very loud helicopter? Or are you going to take a bobsled and feel the icy cold air on your skin? Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Whew, that was a really exciting journey today using our senses. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. Since we're talking about our senses today, we're going to use our spidey senses in order to be mindful today. Some of you may be familiar with the superhero Spider-Man. Spider-Man was able to hear the most tiny quiet noises because of his superpowers. So we're going to activate our own spidey sense of hearing today. So for our experience, get into a comfortable position and I'm going to use a tool to help us activate our spidey sense of hearing today. I'm going to use an instrument that's called a singing bowl. And it's a bowl made out of brass and I have a tool to help me play the instrument. So for our experience, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and I'm going to play our singing bowl. And when you hear the sound, I want you to pay really close attention to it and use that spidey sense. And when you no longer hear the sound that the singing bowl makes, you can open your eyes. Are you ready? Let's try it. Great job. Let's try that one more time. Before we begin again, let's take a big deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. It takes a lot of concentration to activate your spidey senses. All right, let's try it again. Are you ready? If you'd like, you can close your eyes. And when you no longer hear the singing bowl, open your eyes. Ready? Awesome. Thank you for activating your spidey senses with me today. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you see? Let's zoom in to get a closer look. What new details can you see now? Let's zoom in one last time. What do you notice about the materials the artist used? This is a mixed media work of art called Fading Cloth. It's by an artist named El Anatsui. Art that is mixed media means that it was made with more than one material. Mixed media works of art often draw attention to more than one of our senses, since we can usually see different textures and the various materials the artist chose. Although it looks like fabric, this work of art is actually made from pieces of colorful heavy foil that originally wrapped the tops of bottles. They were flattened and stitched together with copper wire. This work of art is 21 feet long, which is as long as an orca whale. What do you think it might feel like to touch? Would it feel smooth or rough? 
Al Anatsui's work of art contains many patterns or a repeating design. What shape do you see repeated here? Do you think you could count all the repeated shapes? What strategies could you use to count them all? Let's see how another artist created a mixed media work of art. We're going to look at this work of art from up close first. What do you notice? Let's zoom out to get a different view. What new details can you see now? Let's zoom out one last time to get the full view of this work of art. What do you see? This is a mixed media work of art called Burning Rods. It's by an artist named Anselm Kiefer. He combined paint with lead and copper, which are types of metal, straw, and even pieces of ceramic to create this piece. Kiefer included objects to add more texture to this work of art that we can actually find. Do you see 14 rods of iron, which is a type of metal, all lined up? There's also an ice skate hidden among this work of art. Let's find it. What unusual objects might you include in a mixed media work of art? If you'd like, you can talk about your plans with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some works of art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So get in that river ferry and smell all there is to smell, or get in your very loud but mighty helicopter, or slide down some slippery slopes in your bobsled, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own texture collages. So we've been talking about the senses today and looking at art uh, that's mixed media. So that means, remember, it's using uh, a couple different materials together and so we're going to make our own collage that's actually meant to be touched so sometimes when we think about artwork especially artwork in a museum it's not meant to be touched but we're going to make artwork today that's meant to be touched by using lots of different textures from the supplies that we'll be using so for our supplies today you can really use lots of different things and really anything that you have around your home so to start, you're gonna need a base. So I'm going to use a piece of cardboard for my base today, but you could use a piece of paper or even a piece of fabric, whatever you have at home is fine. Um, and then we're gonna need some materials to collage with, which means we're gonna kind of cut and paste and put them together. So I have several different materials today. I have some tissues, I have some bubble wrap, I have tissue paper, I have some brown paper from a paper bag. I also, Went into my bathroom and I found some cotton swabs. This is a piece of an egg carton. I found some string and then these are some pieces of cardboard from the box that I cut this piece of cardboard for. And then we're also gonna need some scissors, some taper glue, and if you'd like to use drawing materials, you can use drawing materials. So I'm gonna use colored pencils today, but you could also use crayons or markers or paint or really anything that you have at home. So to make our texture collage, really the big part of this is deciding which materials you're going to use and kind of arranging them to make your work of art. So I wanted to think about using materials that have different textures, so things that are smooth, things that are bumpy, like this bubble wrap, things that are rough, maybe like the string, um, or things that might feel different when I kind of arrange them on my page. So you can decide if you want to make a work of art that represents something like an image or a place or a person or if you just, just want to make something abstract which means it's not really going to portray anything in particular but it's going to be about shapes and lines and designs so I'm going to make mine more abstract today but you can do yours however you want you're the artist so to start it's really just about cutting and pasting and coming up with different elements that you like and you can cut and paste as you go or you can kind of cut everything and then arrange it and then glue it all down at the end so I might do I might glue as I go today and remember the best materials to use for this project are the ones that you already have at home and when I was collecting my materials today, I noticed that I had a lot of things that were the same color, or were kind of in the same color family. So I had lots of things that were brown and tan and white. 
Um, and so I decided to just kind of go with that for my art project. But of course you can use any materials of any color that you want. So sometimes that can be kind of a fun inspiration is to decide to kind of pick a color family um, and kind of go with that. So I was kind of inspired by one of the works of art we looked at, Burning Rods, and that was all kind of browns and blacks and whites, and I thought I might get inspired by that to make my work of art. But the other work of art we looked at, Fading Cloth, was really colorful, so that's a totally different direction you can go in. So as I'm going to make my work of art, I'm going to touch it to kind of see what the texture is going to be like when I feel it, because remember this is our texture collage, so we want to feel it. So I already like how when I run my hands over this, it feels really bumpy, and I can even outline the shapes with my fingers to kind of see what shapes are on the page. So next, I really liked these cotton swabs in your bathroom can be a good place to kind of go exploring to see if there are art materials you want to use. And again, I was inspired by that burning rods piece and those rods of iron that the artist put. So I might kind of do something similar with my cotton swabs. And cotton swabs are going to be hard to glue down, so I might use some tape. And remember, your tape or your glue can kind of be part of your your artwork too. It doesn't have to be something that's hidden. It can be a part of the design. And when you're making a texture collage, since you're going to be using materials that are a little different than like paper or just drawing, um, you might need to get a little creative with how you attach them. So see, I'm going to try to kind of put my tape even in lines so that I can kind of add that as part of part of my artwork. And I'm just ripping the tape long ways so that it's a little skinnier than the width of the tape is already. So those are attached now. And what else? So that also feels kind of bumpy. I think I might need some things that are a little smoother. So I might use some of my tissue paper for this. And if you don't have scissors, your hands are an excellent tool to rip and to get things the way that you want them to be. And that can be a fun way to kind of make different lines on your page without even cutting it. So like that line, I really like that. It's kind of already decided for me just by the way that the paper ripped. So I might cut a piece of that to glue onto the page. fun project to kind of challenge yourself to see how many different textures you can find around your home. So you can even kind of come up with a list maybe with the people that you're with. If you want to find something that's smooth or bumpy or rough or something that's jagged or something that's prickly, you can come up with all these different words and then see if you can find something that you can use for your texture collage. Let's glue that down. That's a very smooth piece of paper. And I just have these little bits that are hanging off of the end, so I can just either fold them over or I can cut them off. And now for some more bumpy parts. So bubble wrap can be kind of tricky to rip, but if you can find a little tear in it, then you can kind of rip it from there. So I'm just going to cut some strips here. And plastic and bubble wrap, they can be glued. Sometimes you kind of have to work with it a little bit, so here I'll glue this piece, see what happens, and then if it doesn't stay, you can always try another technique. So let's see if this glue will hold. Oh, 
I think it is sticking. So sometimes you might surprise yourself. Even if you think something might not work, just give it a try. You never know. That's definitely part of being an artist is trying things out. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it might not work, that's okay. That's what helps us to get creative and problem solve. So now I have some bumpy strips here. And I really liked this kind of, it's kind of smooth, but it's also kind of rough piece of my egg carton. And since this is a little, it's a little bumpier, a little more three dimensional or it pops out, it might be hard to glue. So I might use my tape to do that. If you have scotch tape or duct tape, doesn't matter what kind of tape you have. Tape is tape. So I like the part that's kind of raised here, so I might use that to for my collage here. And I've got another piece here. if you have liquid glue. I don't have any liquid glue, but that can be an easy way to kind of glue things down. So I'm gonna have to work with mine a little bit more to get it to go where I want it to go, but. So for my string, since I don't have liquid glue, I'm just gonna kind of paint with the glue stick where I want my string to go and then just press it on. Or you could tape it on too. You might have to kind of just press it with your fingers. And as long as some of it sticks, then that'll work. You might not get the whole thing to stick, but that's okay. That can always be a part of your artwork if part of it's kind of dangling off. So there, I might kind of leave the end of mine to dangle and then just have this part stick. And what haven't I used? Oh, I haven't used my tissues. Sometimes the most Ordinary materials can create cool effects. So tissues are nice and soft, but you can also crinkle them. So I might kind of add some more, some little pops of tissues around my you can do when you're finished with your artwork or even as you're making it is you can come up with a name so all the artwork that we look at often has a name um, so you can come up with a title for it I'm not sure what I would call this one yet maybe I'll decide when I'm finished back on my glue stick, very important. And I might fill in with my colored pencils. I love using white crayons or colored pencils on dark paper. I think it looks really cool. just from touching and see how many different textures and kind of different lines that you can feel just by just by touching not even by looking so that is going to be our texture collages thank you for joining me today here at we wednesday we hope you had fun i wanted to show you another example of a texture collage that i made so this is the collage that we made together this is the one that I use kind of the same color family and I use lots of different repurposed materials to add different textures to my work of art. So cotton swabs and tissues and bubble wrap and things like that. And I made another one and I decided to depict a more realistic scene. So 
I was thinking about the ocean and water. Um, so I decided to use string to kind of represent kind of the waviness of the ocean. And I used tissue paper to kind of make the fluffiness of the clouds. And I even thought about my bubble wrap with kind of all the little circles are in it for my sun. So there's lots of different ways that you can do it and so many different materials that you can use for your texture collages. I challenge you to see how many different textures you can use in yours. We would love to see your works of art. Please share them with us on social media and use the hashtags STLArtMuseum and WeWednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye!